chapter 14. Matthew 14, we'll be reading verses 22 through 33. And once you find your place, I'm going to ask you to stand and uh, honor the reading of the Word of God. Matthew 14 and verse 22. All right, Luke verse 22, and follow along with me as I read. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Now let me stop right there. Jesus has just finished being with uh, probably 15,000 people. Uh, you know, just prior to this, you read, you'll find where he had, read, had fed uh, at least 5,000 men it says they're not counting the women and children and prior to it. And he took two fish and five loaves and fed them. Okay? Uh, he can do all, they'll do all he wants. He's mad because he's got to get out of here. Amen. 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 He's got to leave. He's not born in here. But anyway, Jesus has just finished feeding all these people and he sent his disciples away and now he's going to uh, rest a little bit. But I want you to understand, as we come into this, the disciples are getting into a ship going out into the sea. Now look at verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Now let me just stop right there. I want to go ahead and tell you, any one of us had been in that boat, would have already been scared because of the storm. And then if we saw something that we couldn't identify walking on the sea, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, we would have been rowing, and that thing would have looked like, looked like a motorboat. Right? Because... We have a fear in us, right? Of things that we don't understand and we don't know. So we see they're troubled. So don't get upset with disciples because they're troubled over this. Because we all would be the same way. Now verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them. He sees their fear, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. You see, he's trying to calm them down. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of the truth, thou art the Son of God. Let's pray together this morning. Brother Brian, would you pray for me? Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of being in your house this morning, Lord. Today, Lord, we come with grateful hearts and we come to hear your word. Father, so we lift Brother Lee up to you this morning. We ask you to uh, just cover him with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and open our ears and our hearts and let your word penetrate deep. And Father, we thank you for your many blessings and we thank you for your word. We love you, Lord, and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, man. Now, many of y'all probably remember Brother uh, Greg singing uh, here at the church uh, the song about stepping out of the boat. Uh, he sang that several times around here. And I preached a, a message on stepping out of the boat. I preached on about uh, getting out of our comfort zone and about getting out and doing something for the Lord and all. And all that, that song and scripture, I mean the uh, message I preached before uh, was based on this same text. So I want you to know if you've got it written down in your Bible, you've probably seen I preached from this before uh, in days gone by. And... Uh, in our text, we, we see here something uh, very important, and that's that all 12 disciples, all of them, are in the boat, but yet only Peter gets out of the boat and walks on water. Twelve 
men, but only one gets out of it. And uh, I look at that, and I don't know how you see it, but when I see 12 men who are disciples, followers of Jesus, but one gets out of the boat, the rest of them, what I see is and that there's a, a lot of observers. Those that stand around and look. Uh, they're just there. They don't do anything. But they're just, yay, look at Peter, right? Can I tell you, there's a lot like that in church today. Have you ever noticed in churches there's a few that do and the rest that are just observers? Ah, huh? well, all right, y'all be quiet. Just sit there. <laughs> and it's a sad thing that throughout every church, I mean, statistic-wise, it says that 20% of the congregation gives 80% of the money. Also says that out of the church, 20% or less are the ones who do everything in the church, and the rest are observers and else in the church. But my, my message today has nothing to do with that. My message today about what is affecting your faith? What is keeping your faith from being a strong, strong faith? Is there anything that's causing your faith to be weak? And that's what I want to share with you today. And in the scripture we see, Peter had faith to get out of the boat and walk on water. Now I don't know about y'all, but that's a lot of faith. It took some faith to get out of that boat and that middle of that storm and walk on water and all. But something happened to his faith because after he got out, he sank in that water. And that's really what I want to deal with today is about what caused him to sink in that water. What caused him to not be able to walk on water anymore? What caused him to lose his faith? So first, I want to show you that everyone in that boat was in the same situation. Now you stop and you think about it. If you went back to verse 24, we find all the 12 disciples were in the same boat, on the same sea, and in the middle of the same storm. They're all there together. Look, look what verse 24 says. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So they're all together in the same situation. They're in storm. Now I know in life, we, we are all in a storm. And you're the old saying, we either just came out of one, or are in one, or we're fixing to be in one. You've heard that, right? Well, can I tell you, we're all going to be in a storm in this life. Something's going to happen in our life at some time or another that's going to challenge our faith. Amen. We're, we're going to have something that's going to come about that's going to do that. So in this verse we've seen here, it says uh, these words, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So we see that that's where they're at. Um, years and years ago, I went offshore fishing with a friend of mine. He had a 20-foot boat, and we went out about 10 miles, and we went out and, and anchored at a reef. And we was out there fishing and doing good and everything, uh, fishing around old shipwreck reef or whatever it was, and we were there. And when we left out, I got to tell you, we went out, it was a beautiful day, early in the morning, we're heading out. We got out past the sea buoy, and we're, we're heading out 10 miles. And the, it was like glass. I said, man, this is going to be a great day. I won't feel sick. I won't feel anything. It's going to be fishing on the lake. <clears throat> we get out there running wide open because it's so slick. We get out there. The GPS tells us we're at our fishing hole, so we mark everything and anchor out. We sit there and we fish. And we fish until it was time for us to head back in. Now, you may have been this way being offshore. Brother Paul, being a Navy man, you may have been out on the ship and it might have been glassy and everything. But you know what? When we got ready to come in and all, on the way back in, a storm had brewed up. We went from slick as glass to anywhere from four to six foot seas. The rain was beating us half to death. The winds blowing. And I'm going to tell you right now, we was out there and I'm thinking, mm -hmm, we, I came to sea land and it's weak. Come on, boat. Let's go. You know, I want to get in. It gets a little scary when you're out like that. You went from everything was great and smooth until you're in the middle of a storm. Can I tell you, life's like that, isn't it? Amen. You're great as long as everything's going smooth, everything's well, but then all of a sudden a storm comes up and guess what? Now you're afraid, aren't you? Now you're scared. 
Well, here we are uh, in the same boat, so to speak, the boat of life we're together in. But we all face different situations in our life. But the, the truth is, it still takes the same faith to face our storm as it does for somebody else to face their storm. You still have to have faith in all. And in verse 25, it says that it was the fourth watch. Now, I want you to see that. The fourth watch. Do y'all know what time that is? Well, I do. 3 to 6 a.m., that fourth watch. Right, Brother Paul? Now, do you know from 3 to 6 o'clock, that's the darkest part? I, and being a hunter and even a fisherman getting out on the water early and so forth, I've been in the woods going to my stand and going to hunt and all, getting out there. And I can tell you right now, just before daylight, it seems like it is the darkest of all dark. So here they are. It's in the wee hours of the morning, 3 to 6 p.m., and they're in the boat, they're in a storm, and things are brewing, and here comes something because they don't know what it is or who it is. Come walking out in and all. Uh, I don't know about you. We, we've all gone. If you've been in Florida, lived here very long, you've went through a hurricane. Unless you ran from it. But most of us have gone through hurricanes in and all. You know what about a storm? During the day, a storm don't seem as bad to me because you can see the wind blowing the trees. You can see the, the rain pounding. If hail's coming, you can see that. But you know what? When it's dark at night, and a hurricane's hitting you and a storm's coming, you don't know where that tornado's at. You don't know when the hell's going to start. You don't know what tree's fixing to fall over and whether it's going to hit you. It seems the nighttime seems to make our storms worse than ever. Can I tell you, in our life storm, when it's dark and we can't figure it out, we can't see Jesus, and we don't know where he's at, what he's doing, it seems like it's the worst part of our life. We're going through it. Do you know what? Everybody reacts differently during the storm. My wife, we'll have a hurricane. We live in the house across the highway over here. We had the storms back to back one summer. I don't know, three or four hurricanes, tropical storms, or whatever came through. I would tell you, I'd, I'd walk out on my porch and I'd sit and watch the wind blow and I'd watch all this kind of stuff. I wouldn't be bothered with it or anything like that. And I'm okay with it. And I'll go in and go to bed. My wife would look at me. She said, What are you doing? Go to bed. Thank you. I'm sleeping. I'm going to bed. She said, you're not worried about the storm? I said, look, it's a storm. If I die, I'd rather be asleep when I die. <laughs> I don't want to see death coming at me. Let me snore. Let me sleep. She will, she'll stay away and she thinks I'm nuts. Don't you face your storms differently in life than other people do? Hmm? You see, sometimes we get all upset, we're all worried, and we have a hard time with our storm. And then you'll see somebody else, and you're looking at their storm, and you're thinking, hmm, man, their storm is horrible compared to mine, but they're not reacting like I am. Their storm, they're okay with. It has to do with our faith sometimes. It also has to do with who we are. Sometimes our storm is horrible to us because we've never been through a storm like we're going through. Right? Well, <clears throat> here when we see these men out here in this boat, by the way, most of these disciples are fishermen. And they're used to being on the sea. They're used to being in storm. Uh, they're, they're used to things like that. But you know what? It's still a storm. To them, it may have been somewhat normal, but now it's in the wee hours and something's walking on the water. You know, sometimes in our life, there's something different in our storm that we can't figure out, is it? They couldn't figure out what it was going on in their storm. Now, here's the point. Every one of us is in the boat of life, and we all face the storms in life and all. While we're in our storm, uh, we didn't realize that Jesus, even though we might not recognize him, is still in the middle of our storm. Now, wasn't he in their storms? 
Did they recognize him? No, they didn't recognize him. But he was still there. Now here's the second thing I want you to see. I want you to show you Peter's faith. Look at verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Do you see those words? If it be thou. Now, do the words speak anything to you? The word if does it give you the meaning of doubt, unsure, not positive. Lord, if it's you, he's heard him speak. I mean, in verse 27, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. But then Peter says, if it be that, I'm not really sure it's you, Lord. But if it is you, bid me to come on out of that water. Help me to come out there and walk. And so Peter's not really positive that's Jesus. Can I tell you, we've all gone through some kind of storm in our life and we've not really been positive whether Jesus is in it or not. Yes. That's the truth. We've gone through. And by the way, if you haven't come to that place yet in the storm in your life, get ready because it'll come. That's right. And you'll be wondering, Jesus, is that really you? Are you really in the midst of this with me? Are you really here with me in all? Now, I want you to stop and think. How many times have you cried out to God in the middle of your storms and you're not really sure that he's in the middle of that situation? Have you ever gone through something in your life and you've cried out to God and you've cried out to God and you've cried out to God and you just, you're questioning God, are you, do you even hear me? Are you with me or not? Listen, Every single, if we'll be honest, every single one of us has been in that situation. Amen. If you haven't, let me just go ahead and tell you, you will. You will. Now, Peter, he's not sure if that's Jesus walking on the water. But I want you to see something. I want you to know he still trusted and got out of the boat. You know what I think? You know the Bible says that we have mustard sized seed faith. We can move mountains. Right? The faith, the faith of a mustard seed. Right? Can I tell you? I think that's where Peter's at. If it's you, Lord, let me come and walk on the water. Come on. Let me tell you something. Peter's a seasoned fisherman. He's been out of, I don't know how many times he's been thrown overboard by the seas. I wonder how many times he's fell out of his boat into the water. Can I tell you, Peter has never walked on water. Peter has been in the water Maybe close to drowning, maybe at the point he had to swim back to the boat and have been helping pull him back into the boat. But Peter at this point has never walked on water, and Jesus says, Come. Come on. I'm going to tell you, when Jesus tells us to do something that we know is not natural, that we know in our mind is impossible, and yet we step out by faith and get out of our boat, okay? I was just going to tell you, if I'd been Peter and my foot would have went over that boat and I stood up on one leg and I didn't sink, I would have went, Woo, hallelujah. Huh? Tell me you wouldn't have. I won't go ahead and tell you right now. If you stepped out of that boat and didn't sink and you're standing on the water, my, I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll let you know real quick who's over there. That's right. It'll let you know real quick. That is Jesus. I'm not doubting anymore. I'm going to walk over there to him. You know, I often wonder how high were those waves and was he only walking on the tops? <laughs> Y'all need to study that sea and how violent those storms were on that sea and how they come down the mountain like that and just tore up. That will amaze you, but I don't have time for that. He stepped out of the boat. You know, our faith doesn't depend on what we know up here. It really doesn't. Our faith depends on what we know here in what this book says. Isn't that what we base our faith on? Trusting the Word of God. 
believing in our heart that God is true and His Word is true in what He says, we can do. Well, now Peter saw Jesus. Peter uh, heard Him say, get out. See, our faith is built on trusting Jesus, isn't it? Peter's faith was built on trusting Jesus. It's not what our natural mind tells us that we can do. Our faith actually sometimes is contrary to what our natural mind says, isn't it? I mean, our mind tells us if we tithe, we'll lose money. But our faith and the Word of God says if we tithe, God will bless us. Amen. You say, preacher, that don't sound possible. I know it doesn't. That's right. But the Bible says it is. I've got faith and I've been doing it for years. And I'm going to tell you right now, God's blessed it. Amen. He's taken care of me. Now here's the last thing I want you to know. What affected Peter's faith? Because we got him walking on water, don't we? We've got him out of there. Well, whatever affected Peter's faith is probably some of the same things that affects our faith today. You know, Peter, Peter was able to walk on water. He was able to do it as long as his eyes were on Jesus and paying attention to him and not his surroundings. When Peter got out of the boat, did the storm stop? No. No. Did the waves calm down? It had become like glass. No. Still there, wasn't it? But was Peter walking on the water? Yes. Because Peter had his eyes on Jesus. I want to read you something that I read in the pulpit commentary about Peter's faith. It says this. The natural tendency to sink, which he had all the time. In other words, it's natural to sink in the water. That's natural. Peter had that all the time. That was in him all the time. Now let me read it again. The natural tendency to sink, which he had all the time, was counteracted by his faith. What changed things? Peter's faith which enabled him to receive Christ's power. Oh, the power of Jesus Christ to Peter came through his faith in what Jesus said he could do. Peter, get out of the boat. Walk on the water. It was, it was, he could do that by faith. But naturally, that was impossible. Can I tell you, for somebody to be healed is not possible on some things without faith. Hmm? Sometimes it takes a lot of faith to be healed, doesn't it? I believe it's in the book of James that talks about the person who's sick, let them come. Let them pray over and anoint them with oil that they might be healed. I wonder how many things. Uh, I'm standing, I've had COVID. Was like wasn't much more than like a cold for me. Some of you've been through some things, and you've been healed. How? By faith that Jesus can do it. By faith that He can get you through it and all. Now, as long as Peter was trusting in Jesus, as long as he was watching Him and looking at Him, he was walking on that water, wasn't he? But in verse thirty. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, beginning to sink. You see what happened? His eyes got off of Jesus. He started looking at the situation around him. He started seeing the wind. He started seeing the storm. He started seeing those waves. No longer is he now looking at Jesus and trusting Him. He's now letting his surroundings make him fearful. And when he became fearful, he began to lose his faith, and he began to sink in the sea. Can I tell you, if we watch our storms, if we take our eyes off of Jesus, what's going to happen is that we're going to sink in the world of sin. Lack of faith. Lack of trust. 
Bible says that the wind was boisterous, meaning it was strong or valiant. But according to verse 24, it said it was contrary. And when I looked up both of these words, boisterous, it's talking about violent, rushing, and just strong wind. Then when you look at the word uh, contrary, it means like winds coming from every direction. Makes me think of a hurricane. Have you ever seen a hurricane? One minute winds this way, one minute that way, the next one. It's coming in all directions. Well, that's what Peter was in the middle of. Before he got his eyes off Jesus, while he was on it, the storm didn't matter. As soon as he took his eyes off, the storm mattered. That's what happens to us. Peter's surroundings brought about fear. And fear caused him to lose his faith. Adam Clark says this in his commentary. It was not the violence of the winds, nor the raging of the waves, which endangered his life, but his littleness of faith. It was this small amount of faith, a lack of faith, that now caused him problems. Because see, as long as our eyes are on Jesus, we've got faith. But when our eyes are off Jesus, we lose our faith. The storm of life are always with us, and how we fare in the storm will depend on our faith. Whether we got our eyes on Jesus, whether we're trusting in Him, whether we're believing Him or not, it will make a difference. Peter was fine in the storm until he took his eyes off it. Peter's faith wavered. It caused him to sink. So if you're worried about the storm and your eyes are off of Jesus, you'll drown in your storm. You'll not be able to walk in the water. The storm will take you down. The storm will make you fearful. The storm will take your faith away from you. The storm will give you down. The storm will keep you from praising the Lord. The storm will just take over your life. That's why we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's why we've got to hang on to our faith and believe His Word. I believe one of the problems with many Christians today in their smallness of faith or lack of is because they don't know the Word of God. They fail to read it. They fail to study it. They, they, they think coming to church and what I get there is all I need. No. You still got to deal with Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And you need faith in those days too. And the only thing that will strengthen you during those times is what the Word of God tells you and how the Holy Spirit deals with you, speaks to you, and leads you. You want to have the faith you should? Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you got your eyes off Jesus, let me just go ahead and tell you, the storm is going to affect you. The storm is going to keep you from being victorious in those things. How's your faith? Where's your eyes? Where's your trust? How much faith do you have? Can you walk on water? Can you praise the Lord? Or has the storm got you down? See, Peter's the only one who got out of the boat. Eleven other guys stayed in. Why did the others? When Peter got out, said, hey guys, let's walk on the water. Because the fear of their storm kept them in the boat. Don't let the fear keep you in the boat. Let's pray to God. Father, I don't know where everybody is in their life right now. Lord, I don't know what kind of storm is going on in their life. Lord, I don't know how many people here today have something that's happened to them and uh, it's bothering them. It's got them all tore up and they're just unsure what the outcome's going to be. And Father, I pray, God, that you let us get our eyes on Jesus. Lord, I ask you today, God, that people would just turn to you and come to you and say, Lord, help me put my eyes on you. Help me to focus, Lord, on you. Help me, God, to trust you, Lord. God, I pray today that you would strengthen our faith and help us to keep our eyes on Jesus. 
In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.